Hello and welcome to Race Control Redux Episode 8. In this episode we'll begin covering the range of adjustments you can make to a car to make it more suited to whatever task you have for it, and we'll begin with the differential. Differentials are a bit complicated, but the essence of them is really quite simple. They analyse the rotational forces going through each wheel and compare it with the force going through the central driveline, then use that to calculate how much grip each driven wheel has. From there, they adjust the power going to each wheel based either on a set ratio in normal cars or an adaptive system in more advanced systems. There are a few different things you can adjust into differential, and these things change depending on the type of differential the car has. We'll start with the least known, the viscous lock. Viscous locking differentials are actually simpler than regular diffs. They just have a few plates that are connected to either axle and then put them both in a housing which is filled with a viscous fluid, hence the name. When one axle is spinning faster than the other, then one set of plates is moving faster inside that housing, which then spins the fluid around which in turn applies force to the opposite axle. Usually when adjusting this you're looking at a percentage and you can read it the same as adjusting a regular diff. A higher percentage means a higher viscosity or more grippy plates, which means that more power is transferred between the axles. More on the effects of this later on. On a more standard differential you have three main settings. These are called different things in different games, so sometimes you'll see power, coast and pump, and sometimes you'll see Axel, Decel and Preload. Without going into the boring mechanical side of how these things work, I'll simply say that these settings are incredibly useful for adjusting a car's ability. A higher acceleration lock means more power will go between the axles when accelerating. To give an extreme example, drifters usually max this value to give a fully locked diff. This means the power is always equal between the axles and in turn gives a lot of oversteer on the power. Minimising this value gives an open differential, which is handy for reducing oversteer drastically, but means that the wheel with the least grip will always get the most power. This is fine for most situations, but does cause understeer and means that if one wheel is off the ground, then you won't get any acceleration at all, since the airborne wheel will always get all of the power. Also, if this setting is causing the inside wheel to spin up, then you'll wear your tyres excessively. Setting this up is very much a question of driving style, but as a general rule you want to be able to put the power down as early out of a corner as possible without excessive oversteer that could cause you to spin out in the heat of a race. In front wheel drive cars, it's nearly always advisable to max this however, since the front wheels need to pull the car around and it won't always be able to do this if the unloaded wheel is spinning needlessly. Going on to the decel lock, this is pretty self explanatory, it defines how much velocity is shared through the axles when decelerating. It doesn't sound like this would affect much, so I'll talk in scenarios here. Let's say you have a car coasting through a constant radius bend. A maxed out deceleration setting will mean that both wheels are forced to rotate at the same speed, which obviously doesn't work since the inside and outside of the car has to travel different distances. As a result, maxing this value provides a lot of understeer when coasting, since the rear wheels aren't willing to allow the car to turn even if the front wheels are steering. The only time you would ever need to go this high on a decel lock is if the engine braking is ridiculously bad or some other aspect of the car is causing it to over rotate massively on entering a corner but you should always look for other solutions to the problem if it's bad enough to warrant such a drastic adjustment. On the flip side, minimising this value gets you an open diff once again, which means fun times for coasting. Whereas an open differential will try to understeer on the throttle in a rear wheel drive car unless you have a lot of power, this same differential setup will heavily promote oversteer on entry to a corner when coasting. This setup is common in front wheel drive cars, as well as low powered rear wheel drive cars, basically anything that wouldn't get upset at a little slide coming into the apex. You could go this low on faster cars as well, just make sure that the suspension can tolerate a slide without snapping back, and also make sure that it's not locking the rear wheels under braking before the fronts. If so, then you should adjust the brake bias to compensate. Finally, we've got the preload. Most people don't have a clue what this does, but like most diff rated things, it's actually pretty simple. It just states how fast it applies whatever forces you've chosen. For example, let's say we take a 100% acceleration locking differential and apply no preload to it whatsoever. Depending on the power of the car, it's going to overwhelm the rear tyres at some point, but perhaps not quite instantaneously. Now, if we were to do the same again, but with maximum preload, we'd find this happening much sooner. The unit for adjusting this is usually pretty abstract, so here's a general rule. A high preload will always be preferable on tighter circuits, and lower preloads will be preferable on more flowing circuits. Let's take a common scenario. Powerful rear wheel drive cars are usually set up to understeer slightly on initial throttle input, and then gently transition into oversteer. This is fine for rich kids trying to look good in their fancy SLS, but for racing this is inconsistent and unnecessary. The initial understeer can be helped with a higher preload, and the transition into oversteer can be remedied by lowering the acceleration lock. Taking another potential issue, let's say the car is snapping out instantly on acceleration every single time. This is common on cars with extremely high torque, and although a diff adjustment won't save the world, you can at least try lowering the preload as much as you can, and then trying again. If it still kicks, then it's time to consider either lowering the acceleration lock, or looking to things like the suspension. That's all for Race Control Redux Episode 8. 
The differential is one of the small things that are relatively simple in terms of cause and effect, and adjusting it to your knees can make a car much easier and faster to drive in some situations. Good luck and thanks for watching.